Hello everyone and welcome to W13 Universe. I am your host Jitch and you are watching Monday Night Raw as we are watching the arrival of the WWE Champion Randy Orton. Last week this man was supposed to defend the WWE Championship against Kevin Nash in the main event. However, things were slightly changed when Kevin Nash was assaulted by a man we thought was inseparable from him. His tag team partner, Vader. We have been confirmed that uh, at SummerSlam in three weeks' time, Kevin Nash will get his opportunity at revenge against the big man, Vader. They are going to go one-on-one, -on -one, and that is going to be a great match as a huge part of SummerSlam this year. What we do not know is who will be challenging that man for the WWE Championship. But I got a funny feeling we're about to hear something about it. Randy Orton making his way to the ring here tonight. Not scheduled for a matchup tonight. Not scheduled for anything here tonight. We are looking to find out who will be next in line for the WWE Championship. But uh, it seems he has uh, taken it upon himself to uh, kick off tonight's Raw. I'm going to cut right to the chase. I'm here for one reason and one reason only. There's something real funny going on backstage, and I've been targeted. Now as you all know, just over a week ago at Money in the Bank, the British Bulldog was run down and injured in the process. Now, last week, you all never saw me defend my title against Kevin Nash. Admittedly, a lot would assume it's because Vader jumped him from behind. But let me tell you, I'm a fighting champion. I would have gladly run out there and given Vader a shot instead. Hell, I think he proved something of himself. But that's not why I'm out here and that's nothing I want to talk about. You see, last week, I was unable to make my way to the ring. As after I was being interrogated about what happened to Bulldog, I was jumped backstage in the parking lot. Now, I'm not saying these two things are connected. There's one consistency among them. But something tells me I know the culprit. Which is why I'm calling out the legacy. Cody, Ted, I don't care who. Fight me tonight for my title. So I can... Oh boy. Well, what is this all about? The Intercontinental Champion, The Rock. Interrupting Randy Orton. Rock is uh, one of the top suspects for what happened to the British Bulldog, which Orton was just speaking about. A lot of people think that The Rock had an awful lot to gain from that. He uh, stole British Bulldog's spot in the match, after all. Rock has insisted that he thinks uh, it was Brett or Pillman. He says, the Pillman's a loose cannon, you can't trust him. He's never a loyal member of the Hart Foundation. Rock insists, most likely it was Pillman. But it could have been Bret Hart jealous that British Bulldog was getting a bigger opportunity than him. The Intercontinental Champion, though, interrupting the WWE Champion. What a way to kick off Raw. Rock with the Intercontinental tie around his waist. I'd like to know what he is uh, coming out here, what he's got the intention to say in tonight. Randy, Randy, Randy! You're boring! These people are bored! But! You said something that caught The Rock's attention. You say that you were jumped in the parking lot. You say that you want to face your former allies and you bring up the ongoing investigation on who ran down that piece of trash, the British Bulldog. I too want to know who did this. So I can thank them personally for handing me my ticket to win a shot at the title round your waist anytime I want. Rock, I'm going to warn you right now. You try cashing that thing on, in on me tonight, and I'll kick your head straight into the cheap seats. I've got my own issues to deal with, and I'm not interested in the likes of you. Uh oh. Things just keep heating up here on Raw. Here comes the boss. Alright, that's about enough from the both of you. Rock, your investigation ends tonight. My son has spoken up and told me that he saw you backstage preparing for your title defense against Bret Hart when the incident took place. 
X-Pac also stood in as your alibi as he passed you on your way to the ring, stating there was no time for you to inflict harm on anyone. You're cleared, Rock. You're innocent. As for you, Randy, I don't know where you get off thinking you can put my main title on the line against whoever the hell you want whenever you want, but it isn't going to work like that. Now the people want a WWE title match tonight as they were robbed of one last week. So that is what we'll give them. And just to further ensure you never think of reuniting with those thugs of yours, you will defend against Ted DiBiase, a man who almost took your title at Money in the Bank. In an Extreme Rules, anything goes match. And if The Rock does choose to cash in on you following this match, that's entirely up to him. Now, the both of you can get the hell out of my ring. Wow. Well, there you have it. Tonight's main event all set up. And what a way to kick off Raw so far here tonight. And it only gets better. This is going to be an interesting match kicking off Raw here tonight as Justin Gabriel is set to go one-on-one -on -one with the Heartbreak Kid, Shawn Michaels. Last week, their tag team partners, X-Pac and Heath Slater, randomly paired up as our Raw Roulette match of the week. And uh, they ended up earning a tag team title opportunity, which they'll be getting up next. However, their tag team partners, Justin Gabriel and Shawn Michaels, not too keen on the fact that either of their partners are teaming up with someone else. They have decided to face off against each other here tonight to make sure that there's no mistake that these guys are not allies. This is going to be a uh, very, very interesting matchup. Shawn Michaels, Justin Gabriel, two very talented superstars set to go one on one. And speaking of the Raw Roulette, tonight's Raw Roulette will be for the Women's Championship. Tiny Shiny set the face off in a mystery stipulation against mystery opponents. Gonna be very, very interested to see what kind of women's championship match we've got here tonight. Three titles on the line. The World Tag Team titles, the Women's Championship, and the WWE Championship in our main event. Something you do not see every week here on Raw, or any weekly show for that matter. <clears throat> but here we go. Kicking things off, Shawn Michaels, Justin Gabriel. This is a very interesting match. Of course, both these two eligible for Xbox Light Heavyweight Championship and uh, technically parts of that division. Right now, are not exactly featured in the tag team title division, unlike their tag team partners. So uh, yeah, this is a this is a big proving time for them. And right now, Justin Gabriel starting things off all over this WWE Champion. Former WWE Champion, that is. Uh, I don't actually think we've seen these two face off in the ring before. So this is a first here tonight. We've got, uh, later on tonight, we're going to be seeing uh, Bret Hart, the man who is uh, currently partnerless, his British Bulldog recovers in the hospital. Uh, we are going to be seeing Bret Hart tonight face off against Jinder Mahal in singles competition. There's been some suspicion that perhaps Jinder Mahal or the Great Khali had something to do with running down the British Bulldog. As uh, we know that... Uh, they um they they kind of had their careers derailed at the hands of uh, one Bret Hart and one British Bulldog, uh, way back over the limit. It's a little bit of a stretch, but I got to say, with The Rock being cleared, having two alibis on his side, I uh I don't actually know who could have done that to the British Bulldog. I really would have thought The Rock. I mean, he definitely gained the most out of it. But uh, I guess that's now off the table, and that leaves things definitely as a mystery that will continue to be investigated here on Raw. Maybe it was John Cena. He's definitely run people down in the past. Undertaker can tell you that. Okay, what with every single strike that Justin Gabriel connects with, Shawn Michaels does not seem phased. 
This former WWE champion, as I say, he's got a lot to prove here tonight. His protege is uh, starting to really overtake him as of late. And I think that's kind of chipping away a little bit at Shawn Michaels to know that uh, X-Pac is actually doing better than he is. Float over neck breaker there by Michael as he continues to fight back in this one. A lot of experience as a former WWE champion and former WWE tag team champion. So Michaels has never settled for less than the best. However, the Intercontinental or Light Heavyweight title could very much be in his future one day. We've definitely seen Michaels challenge for the Intercontinental title on quite a few occasions. He's just never been successful in capturing it. Quite some time back, Justin Gabriel was definitely not a fan favorite, but uh, he has really started to win the crowds over with his uh, heart-stealing performances, and the fact that he just seems to be improving all around as a better man. Rock is very bitter about Justin Gabriel and some of the history, and honestly, some of the things that happened to The Rock at the hands of Justin Gabriel and uh, his partner Brie Bella, who we don't really see uh, around Gabriel as much these days. I do wonder uh, what the connection between those two is. And here comes Heath Slater, the tag team partner of Justin Gabriel, who is set to challenge for the tag team titles next. Obviously feeling a little bit conflicted here. He thought he'd come out for his tag team partner, Justin. I respect it for what it is. Heath Slater trying to show support to his buddy. And he may have just secured him a victory. Michael's distracted. Here's the cover. No. Gabriel giving Shawn Michaels a taste of his own medicine with that super kick. But the ropes keeping Michaels alive in this one. Justin Gabriel over the ropes. Going to the top. Are we going to see? Oh, no. Okay. Thought perhaps we got... Oh! Shawn Michaels! That's not even in this game, is it? Catch finishes? I don't think they are. What just happened? And with Justin Gabriel uh, having the opening there, he's slay with a distraction. Justin Gabriel is up to his feet. Here's the cover. And Michael... Oh, no. Back and forth between these two. Where is X-Pac? Why is X-Pac not helping Shawn Michaels? Four fit oh, Shawn Michaels with a reversal. And then call him the showstopper for nothing. And there they go again. Really didn't think catch finishes were in this thing. I'm not sure how he did that. That super kick is like really confusing me. Justin Gabriel and Heath Slater kind of outnumbering Shawn Michaels. This is not going to sit well with X-Pac, who is set to team up with uh, with with Heath Slater next. Can't see him appreciating his partner doing what he's doing. Gabriel. Oh, got the referee. Come on, Justin. This is you put this kind of day behind you. Justin Gabriel. Oh, he changed his mind. He's gonna say that is a very old Justin Gabriel. We are past that Justin Gabriel. Look out, Sean. Oh, oh, there it is. You hate to see it. But there it is. Shawn Michaels and Justin Gabriel just tearing the roof off this place to kick off Monday nights. And I guess, to be honest, can you expect any less from two of the best?
holding up for a second. Nice backbreaker. Michael is absolutely in control right now of Justin Gabriel despite being put through that announce table just moments ago. He has gotten back to his feet. He has continued to just fight and fight. Heath Slater has decided that perhaps he's overstepped his limits. He is, uh, he's now taking a step back. Justin Gabriel in the corner. Uh, Shawn Michaels really getting the best of the rookie here. Justin Gabriel now up on the top. And again! For the second time! I'm so confused. When was that thing in 13? The rope's the only thing keeping him alive there. Justin Gabriel has survived not one, but two super kicks. And I think, honestly, he's got the ropes to thank for it. That didn't quite work. This is any man's game right now. Shawn Michaels. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh! Pile driver on the concrete. Oh no! Wait a minute! Oh, big iris whip right into that security wall. And we're going back. Justin Gabriel is dazed, and you can't really expect any less. That man has been booted in the face hard, not once but twice. And he's still going for the 450 splash here. And once again, Sean is up to his feet. Where did this come from? So much damage, and he gets into the ropes. And he gets the shoulder up. Sean Michaels connecting once again. Unable to get the job done. 450 splash to Michaels kicks out. Gabriel is beside himself. He can't believe it. What a way to kick off Monday Night Raw. These two are absolutely tearing the roof off this place. With just This match has got no stakes. This is just a straight up singles match here. <coughs> Michael's trying desperately to crawl towards the ropes. And he just about does. Gabriel telling him, come on, get to your feet. Michaels is up to his feet, all right. There you go, cross body. Drops him down. Shawn Michaels connecting with move after move into the cover. And Justin Gabriel just about kicked out of that one. Turns Michaels around. Sit out power bomb into a cover here on Michaels. And again, Michaels kicks out. What is it going to take for either one of these two to be finished? Gabriel having second thoughts. I think he realizes every time he's gone for one of those, Shawn Michaels has come in hot with one of those sweet chin music. He's got to do something else. And a kick of his own. Right into the jaw of Shawn Michaels. Here's the cover. Is this one over? No. Still, these two fight on. Roll up here by Sean. And Shawn Michaels just about steals a victory in what I think is going to go down as a real classic here. What a way to kick off Raw. Absolutely phenomenal performance from both of these two. But Shawn Michaels, the former WWE Champion, picking up another victory here tonight. And it's his first since coming back here to Raw, I believe. He really needed this here tonight. What a career resurgence in a single match. He's still got it. Shawn Michaels victorious kicking off Raw as we move on to our next match. Shawn Michaels' protege, X-Pac, facing off alongside Gabriel's tag team partner, Heath Slater as they challenge for the World Tag Team Championship. That is next.
way to the ring. The world tag team champions, Nightmare, Jet, Storm, and the Disciples of Darkness. Well, make no mistakes about it, this is for the World Tag Team Championship. And this is going to be a very interesting World Tag Team title matchup. We just saw Heath Slater at ringside trying to help Justin Gabriel defeat the tag team partner of uh, X-Pac, Shawn Michaels. And that didn't exactly work out. That's going to cause some real tension amongst these two more freshly put together teammates. Slater has got a big opportunity here tonight to capture the World Tag Team Championship alongside X-Pac, a former WWE Tag Team Champion with Justin Gabriel. I believe no tag team thus far has actually held both the WWE Tag Team Champions and uh, World Tag Team Championships in, uh, you know, going from one brand to another. So Heath Slater could make history tonight. He could be the first man to have held both the World Tag Team and WWE Tag Team Championship, but... I think much to Justin Gabriel's disappointment, he would be achieving that alone. Of course, the light heavyweight champion x part could be a double champion coming out of this match. Agents. Imagine this man holding double the gold coming out of tonight's match. It is entirely possible. Tensions are definitely high amongst X-Pac and Slater's tag team partners. We can tell from tonight's exchange that Justin Gabriel and Shawn Michaels do not see eye to eye. But, well, you can't keep these two apart. If they want to be a team, they get to be a team. It's not up to Shawn and it's not up to Justin. Here we go, Heath Slater starting things off against Nemesis, and let's not forget it was the Raw Roulette that put these two together, as they uh, won a steel cage match against the Disciples of Darkness, the first loss that the Disciples have suffered since um, this season, since returning to Raw. Wait, no, I think they were always on Raw. More actively being featured on Raw, at the very least. No, I think they were draft. No, yeah, because they were on SmackDown, that's right, yeah. Since returning here to Raw, they have uh, really tried to turn their careers around, and it has done them wonders. Suffered their first loss as a team last week. Upset in the steel cage. We'll see if that was an upset, or if that if history will repeat itself. Let's not forget, Heath Slater and X-Pac, they win this night. They are the new World Tag Team Champions. What a difference that's going to make. Oh, the tag division. World Tag Team Division here on Raw definitely took a big hit last week, though, when we saw the um, the deconstruction of Kevin Nash and Vader, the power trip, one of the biggest, most feared teams in all of WWE history. Two-time World Tag Team Champions last week. Vader laying out Kevin Nash. We've had no comments on Vader as to why he did this. The only thing that I can kind of piece together is perhaps he was tired of living in Kevin Nash's shadow. Perhaps he took personal offense to the fact that the moment Kevin Nash, oh, I'm sorry, the moment Vader was out for injury, Kevin Nash used it as a stepping stone to get closer to the WWE Championship. Perhaps it had something to do with the fact those two fought quite a bit in the championship scramble. Maybe tensions rise between them. No one truly knows what went down between those two last week on Raw. Only Vader knows why Vader did what Vader did. Kevin Nash is not here tonight, unsurprisingly. Taking a, taking a week away to try and process exactly what went down between him and someone he considered a best friend. <clears throat> Power trip formed in uh, 
November of last year in the Survivor Series. And uh, they made it all the way here? down to... And he's heading back in. The Nightmare goes behind. Just prior to SummerSlam before unfortunately falling apart. Tag made to X Park. Nemesis so far. Definitely keeping things under control for his side right now. X Park works over the arm of Nemesis. Very back and forth contest so far, but once again, I'm seeing that uh, X Park and Heath Slater seem to be working greatly as a team. It's good to see that uh, X Park isn't too upset with Heath Slater for getting involved. I mean, he literally laid his hands on X Park's tag team partner, Shawn Michaels. Surprising to hear X Park stand up as an alibi for The Rock, uh, proving that The Rock was innocent. And Shane McMahon, I would have at least found very questionable, but uh, X Park, well, I kind of confirmed it really. the head but X Park very much on his feet right now he is making sure that uh, nothing connects with him if he can help it tag made to Jetstar as the uh, disciples of darkness continue to uh, succeed to work as a tag team one of the most stable tag teams in this whole series uh, they formed May of last year they're still going strong J July August of this year Star is never really known to be a singles competitor, actually. Uh, he came in last year after Je Nemesis debuted early on that same year. And they've just kind of worked as a team ever since. One of the most stable teams in x Park here saying, no, Slater, you continue to compete. I don't know if that was a miscommunication error or if that was uh, deliberate. Coming off the ropes, big kick to the head. Just start dropping an elbow. And we see a cover attempt here on Slater, but it's just a one. X Park, hold on. Taking a moment to uh, help Slater, who did not tag X Park in there. That was a mistake. Definitely, definitely was a mistake there on X Park's part. And a huge clothesline takes Heath Slater off his feet. Jetstar often seen more the powerhouse between the two. Been known to uh, really manhandle the likes of Vader and Kevin Nash in the past. Big contributing factor in helping them win the World Tag Team Championship. Uh, yep, that didn't happen. Let's, <clears throat> let's just not pay any attention to that. Slater wisely tagging out to X Park. I've got to say, he's definitely taking quite a bit of damage in this one. His World Tag Team Championships are on the line. Not to forget, though, the Raw Roulette continues next. One of our most favorite parts here on Raw. The Women's Championship will be on the line. There's no telling how many participants, what kind of a match, or who it's going to be. But Tiny Shiny will defend that Women's Championship next. We could see our first ever Women's Hell in a Cell match. You never know. Anything's possible here on Raw with the Raw Roulette. As X-Pac has made sure that Slater got back in the ring. That seems to me like a big mistake right now. Although I'm starting to think there may be a little bit more of an intention behind that. I'm starting to think perhaps he Slater and X-Pac aren't quite on the same page tonight that they were last week. And they might honestly have their partners to blame for it. I mean, no one told Heath Slater to go out there and start attacking Shawn Michaels. That was of his own accord. I must admit that. 
Elbow there by Jetstar as he goes to make the tag to Nemesis, but uh, oh no, there you go. Okay, really thought Slater stopped that, and here comes the light heavyweight champion X Pac. Said before, if uh, X Pac suffers a pinfall loss to either Nemesis or Jetstar, well, you are looking at uh, two people eligible for the light heavyweight championship. Perhaps that could uh, this title defense could lead to another title defense. Perhaps it will be Nemesis or Jetstar that are two-time champions here on Raw, you never know. Would you listen to this crowd show their appreciation for these of course, I think they'd have to pin or submit X-Pac to earn that shot. Quick thinking to avoid that. Dodges to the side of that one. Nice dodge there. Very back and forth little contest here as we see a neck breaker connecting there by Nemesis on X-Pac. And he's going to make the tag back to Jetstar once again. Just say, working very fluid as a tag team. You can really tell the solidarity. And X-Pac obviously a little shaken by it. He didn't like that one bit. Drops him flat down on the knee there. The knee. Slater's hair rocks, apparently. It rocks. Take down there by X Park. In control of this tag team matchup. People power. No, that's on SmackDown. We don't talk about people power here on Get stuck in the better of X Park here as he sends him. Into the rope, no, rip, whips him back, jawbreaker. That wasn't very accurate. I really don't know which team has the upper hand right now. You know, credit where due, uh, Disciples have always worked as a team, whereas Slater and uh, x Park seem to be struggling to coexist here tonight. But all the same, x Park is on another level right now. He's doing great at competing in this match by himself. Heath Slater, I think, was getting a little bit schooled in this one. X-Pac really taking control. And it seems like every time you tag Slater in, that seems to be more of a mistake. But right now, he's uh, going for it again. Slater got Jetstar up to his feet. And uh, once again, that's proven to be a little bit of a mistake as the control of this one has been turned around. In comes Nemesis. And there goes Jetstar. And there goes Slater. He bladed midway down. <laughs> oh, no. You can't win the tag titles by count out, Slater. Think about this. Several kicks there by Nemesis, nicely connecting one after another. There you going now. Off the ropes with a crossbody, okay. Here's a cover on Slater, is this going to be enough? No. Nemesis now got Heath Slater down. Coming off the top rope with that crossbody. More of a moonsault. I don't know why I said crossbody. It wasn't crossbody at all. And that is it. That is this tag team title defense done. Xbox seemed to have a moment of hesitance there. He didn't really seem too concerned about getting in and helping Heath Slater. And now Nemesis holds a pinfall victory over Slater. I mean, at least, admittedly, it protected the light heavyweight championship situation that I was talking about before because it wasn't X Pac that suffered the loss. But uh, what does this mean for the future of Heath Slater and X Pac? Was this a one off thing? Will they have more of a future? I don't know, but right now they're not working too great like they did last week. And I think they have their partners to blame. Anyway, up next, Tiny Shiny will defend her women's championship 
in a fatal four-way, it has been confirmed. That is not a good odd for Tiny Shiny. What kind of fatal four-way, you might be asking? Well, the Women's Championship will be on the line in a... Right, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. Table! Fatal four. Oh no, 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 no. We're gonna re-roll that. Actually, we just realized. Sorry, I wouldn't normally do that, but a table match after what we saw before. A, uh. Come on. Land. Sorry, it's really laggy. We got ourselves an elimination. Fatal four way. Keeping it simple. Tiny Shiny, the women's champion, defends her championship next against three mystery women. Who will it be? How will she survive the elimination four way? <coughs> we'll find that out next. Shiny set to defend the women's championship in this fatal four-way elimination style match. She has had it a, a little bit difficult as of late with the uh, opposition that she has had thrown her way, but she continues to overcome and fight to the best of her abilities. We'll see if she can continue that streak tonight, if she can overcome the odds of an elimination four-way matchup. I don't know who she's up against. That could be a huge contributing factor in what's to happen here tonight. Her own ally Layla, apparently. Layla is, of course, um, somewhat of a friend of Tiny Shiny. They work together to try and overcome uh, being outnumbered by uh, Kelly Kelly, Bri Bella, and Stephanie McMahon a while back. <clears throat> really kind of helped uh, Layla get out of a bad situation to Tiny Shiny there as she uh, helped assist. And they seem to have backed down a little bit ever since then. But now here tonight, uh, Layla could end up taking Tiny Shiny's title away. I don't think that would be very appreciated, but it's a possibility. Anything goes. <coughs> Former women's champion Natalia, the Next entrant in this matchup should be an interesting opponent for the both of these. Someone who has really uh, not had much of a spotlight on her as of late here on Raw, actually. This could be a huge opportunity for Natalia to kind of resurge her career, get back on top. Yeah, this, this could do her wonders. Question is, can she overcome Tiny Shiny? I believe that is who... Natalia lost the title to her once. No, 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 no. She lost it to Kelly Kelly, who lost it to Tiny Shiny. I'm not sure I believe the Raw Roulette actually landed on this one. <laughs> like, don't get me wrong. I, I don't question the authenticity of Raw Roulette. I believe that what they say happens with Raw Roulette happens with Raw Roulette. But, uh... I, I don't know about this. Something something seems a little bit off about Stephanie McMahon being the final person to take part in this match. Nonetheless, you know, I think uh, Tiny, Shiny, and Layla should have this one pretty well covered. Natalia doesn't seem to be an ally of Stephanie McMahon by any means. And, uh, neither Tiny, Shiny, nor Layla are, so I don't see anyone handing Layla a vi I mean, sorry, handing Stephanie McMahon a victory here tonight. I'm just going to quickly put my phone on charge, as uh, I had it on me until I was done with the Raw Roulette, but it is now on purpose. <clears throat> Look at the gold! Elimination four-way matchup for the Women's Championship Raw Roulette delivers once again. 
Sometimes it gives you very strange matches, and other times it gives you wonderful matches. I feel like this could be in the wonderful category. I've got a good feeling about this four-way elimination match. Tiny Shiny will be will need to be eliminated at some point in this kind of a match, at least. If anyone's, like, upset at me for skipping over the table option, by the way, the only reason I went against it is because, uh, we had a multi-person table match a while back, and it just went to a time limit draw. No one won, because they kept trying the table spots too quickly. <sighs> so I'm gonna pass on those for a bit, and wait until, like, a better game. I might just remove table from the raw roulette option. I think, well the thing is, I think I'll keep it. I just won't let it be for like multi-person matches. There'll probably be more of a thing I play if there is a table match. Maybe I'll just re-roll a little more often if it lands on them. I just won't mention it out loud. <laughs> Not that that's something I do, it's just I, I wouldn't wanna... I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying here. I don't wanna I'll like get the idea of a table match and then take it away. Inziguria head kick. This is our third match here tonight on Raw, the traditional slot for the uh, Raw Roulette matchup. I don't know how I'm 55 minutes into this recording. That's a little concerning, considering I'm only on the third match of five. I don't know why this episode is so long. That's really strange. Still to come following this, Bret Hart and Jinder Mahal set to go one-on-one -on -one as Bret Hart tries to force the answers out of Jinder Mahal, find out the truth about his tag team partner British Bulldog and what went down. Still waiting on an answer there, and then up to next. Up following that, our main event for the WWE Championship, uh, Ted DiBiase and Randy Orton for the WWE title. We've been told Cody Rhodes is going to uh, be kept away from the ring by any means necessary. Natalia and Layla really going out on the outside while Stephanie McMahon and Tiny Shiny lock up inside the ring. <clears throat> I need a drink. I don't actually have one around me, I just realized. Whoops. Yeah. Oh, wow, look at that. Stephanie McMahon pulling back on the hair of the women's champion, Tiny Shiny. Submission hold applied here by Natalia, but Layla able to struggle out of that one. I do wish Ted DiBiase the best of luck here tonight, you know. Kid's got a lot of potential. We saw it back uh, last year on ECW. Uh, following the resurgence of that brand, we saw uh, a hell of an uprising for Ted DiBiase. But, uh, and of course, let's not forget back at SummerSlam last year, it was DiBiase that defeated Randy Orton and Cody Rhodes to win the United States Championship. He's always kind of been a little bit slept on as the potential breakout guy for the legacy. Um, but here tonight, he gets that shot at Randy Orton, and I can't help but feel like he's in danger still. Can't help but get in my head that, uh, he is in some serious danger. Whew. I don't know if I already mentioned this earlier, but I found out from looking up online in between matches that this was the first game with catch finishes. It's just barely anyone has them. Which will be why I've never seen the prompt for it and tried one. <coughs> Tiny Shiny is signaling for the 925, which could very much be the finish for Stephanie McMahon. There it is. 925 drop flat down it goes Stephanie McMahon cover and there's a kick out. Okay, I was not expecting that kick out. 
Could have fooled me. McMahon is really, really struggling to uh, be a bigger part of this matchup. Tiny Shiny has not let up on her at all. And it's interesting to see Layla and Tiny Shiny have not crossed paths once in this match, but as I say, they are allies. Butterfly suplex there sends Layla across the outside by Natalia. Now picking her up and power slam down. For Layla and Stephanie McMahon, this would be a first time championship victory. This would be Natalia's second women's championship and third championship overall as a former Divas champion. And there's a discus clothesline on Layla. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that going to be enough? Go on, go for the cover. No. Big clothesline drops down Layla. And Natalia continues to be in control. I feel like uh, we've very much seen a Natalia and Tiny Shiny dominated four way. It's going to be interesting to see what happens when those two's paths finally actually collide in this matchup. Right now, they have just been dealing with their other opponents, respectively. <clears throat> I don't know what Stephanie was thinking to, to uh, decide to lock up with with the champion herself to try and go straight for the woman on top. I guess it's an ego thing. I wouldn't really understand exactly what else would drive her. The hell is Tony Shiny doing? I was watching that. That was really weird. <sighs> Some serious skills on display by Layla. Back and forth these two go. Tiny Shiny locking up with Stephanie. Layla dragging Natalia over to the announce table. She's got her set up. Natalia on top. Uh oh. Uh oh. How many times can we have this one broken in one night? Well, here's another one. Number two. Covered by it, nope. Got some weird camera angles here. Oh, 9 to 5 for the second time. That's got to be it. Stephanie McMahon's got to be done. Stephanie McMahon has got to be eliminated from this one, surely. Tiny Shiny with the cover. There goes Stephanie. Unsurprisingly, Stephanie McMahon, the first to be eliminated from this women's championship match, which I still stand a little questionable about uh, her being in. Tiny, shiny Natalia, Layla, all kind of starting to show signs of wear after about 10 minutes in this matchup, as finally we're seeing Tiny, shiny and Natalia lock up, whilst Layla just kind of watches on. They say Layla and Tiny, shiny, they got kind of a friendship amongst them. You don't really seem to see them cross paths with each other in this match. But it could come down to those two. And then what? Who's going to break that kind of bond between them? Who's going to be the one to get a move on the other? At some point, they're going to have to face off in this match. Right now, though, Natalia is in a very unfavorable situation. <clears throat> she is just completely outnumbered. Oh, and now Layla helping Tony Shiny. Okay, there it is. DDT. As I say, it's any woman goes. Well, anything goes, I should say. Any any woman. Uh, any woman for themselves. That's the line I was trying to think of. Sorry. I'm a little bit sleepy. <laughs> Words don't come out so very fluid. Discus clothesline on Tiny Shiny by Natalia. Here's the cover. Is that the end of Tiny Shiny's reign? No. She kicked out. Breaker there by Layla. Okay, Layla, that was a little weird. No, no, no. Okay. Oh, 
Off the ropes. Big kick to the chest. I feel like Layla and Tiny Shiny are kind of working towards the mutual goal of eliminating Natalia. Drops down Tiny Shiny. Okay, and there's a turn around. YOLO. <laughs> Remember when people said that? <laughs> yeah, that was nine years ago. Thanks, game. And here's the cover. No. slowed down now that we've gone down to these three. Seemed like the Stephanie McMahon did provide one use for this match, which is that she helped kind of keep things flowing. Two on two and all that. Natalia really seems to be having a bit of an uphill struggle right now. The women's champion now, returning the favor on Layla. She goes in for the cover. Layla with a quick kick out. <clears throat> and they shift their attention right back to Natalia. Oh! Tiny Shiny with a kick to the face of Layla. I don't really know what, what's happening in this match anymore. It's really slowed down. Tiny shiny on the top. Oh, elbow to the face. And Layla with a float over DDT. Tiny shiny signaling for the 925, but Layla, gate crash in that one. Roll up attempt here by Natalia. Is this going to be enough to get Layla out of this one? No, uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. We could be here a while, folks. Strap in. The only time you'll ever see two counts in WB13. There it is. Le Layla has been eliminated by Natalia. Uh oh. This could be Natalia's night. Tiny, shiny, and Natalia, the only two remaining. And Natalia is in control. No! Oh. Wheelbarrow suplex. With a real devastating impact. Side suplex sends Tiny Shiny flat down. Uh oh, Natalia signaling for that one last discus clothesline. And there it is. Right across the chest for some reason. That's like really low. Right below the booby. As we see now, Natalia going in for the cover here on Tiny Shiny. And this one's over. Tiny Shiny has lost the women's championship to Natalia. That is definitely not the way I foresaw this one going. But Natalia is a two-time women's champion. War Roulette has provided us a brand new champion coming out of this one. And as we move towards our next match of the night, Bret Hart, a man heavily in pursuit of the Rock's Intercontinental Championship will look to get one step closer to justice over the damages done to his partner British Bulldog as he looks to get a confession at a Jinder Mahal. <laughs> 
<laughs> no introduction allowed. Jinder Mahal makes his way down to the ring here tonight. Set to face off against the hitman Bret Hart, whose stocks greatly increased at Money in the Bank, despite a loss, because he put on one hell of a performance against uh, The Rock for the Intercontinental Championship. Here's a man who has uh, not exactly been able to make much of a name for himself as of late here on Raw. Jinder Mahal has uh, tried and tried again to make himself relevant, and that has just not worked out for him yet. Tonight could be the night, though. I'm open to the idea of that. You know, it's, it's entirely possible. But this is a man fixed on uh, retribution, a man fixed on justice, a man trying to make sure that uh, the truth comes out about what happened to his tag team partner, the British Bulldog, at Money in the Bank. The man was scheduled to compete in the Money in the Bank ladder match, and it ended up being a very crucial loss from that match, as the man that was replacing him in that match, The Rock, ended up winning the Money in the Bank ladder match. So it was a very crucial change. There's no telling. That could have been British Bulldog's career-defining moment stolen away from him there. Bret Hart's eyebrows really don't look like that. <laughs> I don't know what happened with this character model. There's I made him look like a caveman. feel that electricity. This is what WWE is all about. Bret Hart is going to hold absolutely nothing back against Jinder Mahal, I can tell you that much now. Jinder has been dying to get an opportunity to, to step back into the ring and prove himself. And uh, here tonight, he's getting it. But in the end, I don't know how bad he's going to want it. Bret Hart is a man fixed on determination right now to just get to the bottom of this. They say investigations have been getting conducted backstage over the last couple of weeks, and so far, they don't have any likely al- I mean, sorry, sorry, not any likely al- but any likely uh, suspects for who could have done this. Right now, oh boy, here we go. Pile driver. Dropping Jinder Mahal flat down. I can't believe he can still stand. And we get whoa. <laughs> what the fuck? Squeezing down on the head. And he brings his leg crashing down. You know, insult to injury was added last week when The Rock defeated Bret Hart's partner Brian Pullman uh, with the sharpshooter. We know exactly what The Rocks were trying to do. To say, I'm <coughs> very shocked to hear that The Rock actually did have nothing to do with what happened to uh, to the British Bulldogs. We see now a second vicious pile driver there by Bret Hart. <coughs> Going to take him to the center of the ring here, and here we go. Sharpshooter getting applied. Jinder Mahal dead center of the ring. Bret Hart made sure of that. Jinder is crawling, he's begging, but he has to tap out. That was quick, that was effective, that was decisive. Bret Hart with a victory over Jinder Mahal here tonight. Bret Hart is victorious, closing out. This uh, matchup, really no offense in from Jinder Mahal, as I say, uh, wrong play for wrong time. I'm not sure if it really was him that could have done it, the Bulldog, though. I don't. I, I think we're kind of digging up some old bones there. I just want to know who did it. <clears throat> right now, I hate to admit it, but maybe The Rock's right. Maybe Brian Pillman did do it. He is a little bit of a loose cannon. That is what he's known as. Go on, Jinder, reach for those cheeks. You can do it.
contest is an extreme rules match. And it's for the WWE Championship. Well, per the boss's orders, this match will take place. Randy Orton will defend the WWE Championship against Ted DiBiase. And he's not wrong to say that Ted DiBiase was the man closest to taking that title away from Randy Orton at Money in the Bank. In the championship scramble match, Ted DiBiase was the tentative champion for almost 10 minutes of that 20-minute matchup. Randy Orton just barely scraping by and getting his WWE Championship back in that match. <clears throat> Here tonight, Ted DiBiase could finally capture the big one. We know back on uh, ECW, he was in heavy pursuit of the ECW World Heavyweight Championship. It's uh, been quite a roller coaster ride for the likes of uh, Ted DiBiase, the Legacy, and Randy Orton. Cody Rhodes very much just kind of in the middle, man, to be honest. Very curious to see exactly how this WWE Championship match will unfold. We've been told Cody Rhodes will be kept far, far away from this one. The legacy could not be more dead for Randy Orton. I've been told that Cody and Ted are a perfectly solid unit. They will continue to team as the legacy. Randy Orton is out. It's crazy to think just what we've been through with Ted DiBiase. If you were watching this man on ECW last year, late last year, early this year, he was, he was really going somewhere. He was really showing a lot of promise and potential. But it was what we saw Earlier this year when he went to SmackDown, sold out people who had backed him, people who had been in his corner pulling for him. That's when we found out who Ted DiBiase really was. This WWE Championship is on the line, and Randy... Oh! Well, I mean, in a no-disqualification match, I don't really see how that's going to matter too much. It's no-disqualification. Anything goes. Ted DiBiase and Randy Orton for the WWE title. Let's get this one going. Can't wait to see next week the return of uh, Kevin Nash and Vader here to... Uh, to Monday Night Raw. See Randy very quick on the offense. Obviously Ted thought he was being smart by ducking Randy there. Little does he realize Randy doesn't give a damn if the referee's there to count or not. He's here to hurt Ted DiBiase. Oh. Now Ted's showing that he can be brutal. Look out, he's got a chair. Randy. Whoa, whoa, whoa! This one really just started! Whoa! What? No way! That was a quick and decisive victory for the WWE Champion. Overcome it. Uh oh. Could. Already? Could this be? Wait, wait a minute, what the- Whoa, whoa, hold on a minute! What?! The- Oh! What does this mean? 